Hi friends, this is Chris with Josephine's Designs. I am back for today's faith journaling class. It is all about scripture writing and more. So let's pray. We'll get started. And yeah, all right. Dear Lord, we come to you today. We thank you for today, Lord. We ask you, God, to be with us this time at this time. Lord, there's just so many different things going on in the world today, and we just ask for your wisdom, for your grace, for your mercy, for your guidance as we walk through these days that are here. Lord, we pray right now that as we come to you, that we can come on very bended knee with a very humble heart and seek your will. We ask you, God, right now that my words would be your words and that they would be nothing but you that we would hear today, Lord. Lord, we want to thank you and praise you for all the good things that you're doing. And Lord, we just thank you so much for all that you're doing for Donna and her husband, Wayne. Lord, we praise your name. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen. Okay, friends, so I want to start off. I got the most wonderful email today. I have not answered it because we spent the morning at doctor's visits and it was just, it, it all ended up being all good. Very, very good. I went and had my test run. We don't know the results. I don't think we're going to find out till next week, though you and I both know it's an instant read, but you know, <laughs> it's Friday. So um, anyways, um, we, I, I, I came home. I did not sleep much last night because I could not get the video at I was at five hours trying to upload it at when I sent out the message to you guys. And I'm not sure when that hit. And I finally, it finally loaded by 1 a.m. And then we had to be up very early to be on the road, to go to the city, to go to the dock. Yes. So I'm nothing like an early morning appointment. So anyways, I, um, I'm exhausted. I did not know how tired I was. <laughs> and so uh, I've been, and I wasn't tired enough to go to sleep, but not tired enough to get, I mean, and I've gotten, praise God, so many different things done, and I'll be sharing that with you at the end. But um, just crazy tired, and I'm getting ready to run over to the Walgreens, and to the, the Walgreens, right? <laughs> to Walgreens, and see if I can't find a nail polish I'm looking for. But I um, think it's time I could put a little polish on besides my, save the nail stuff. <laughs> Anyways, I was talking to the gal who did my test and she was, we were talking about who she uses and who does her nails and all that. And she lives where we used to live. So it was kind of neat and it was fun to, to talk to her. She was a very nice, nice woman. All right. So, um, first off, Donna, thank you for sending me an email. Um, I am going to, read a couple of things out of this. I meant to highlight it and I didn't, but the basic gist of your prayers for Wayne, he had surgery yesterday. He did very well. And the doctor said he was sure he got all the cancer off the kidney. He will get another MRI in three months to tell for sure. And he goes in May 1st for a second part of his cancer on his liver. Evidently, he had had cancer before. They removed part of the liver. They, they can't have any more taken out, but they are going to um, go after the two lesions that are there and um, to cut the cancer out again. So the procedure won't be a big procedure like it was the first time two years ago. So the doctor is very optimistic that he will recover from this. And she just says, thank you for everyone's concerns and prayers and how much she appreciates them. So, um, and then, you know, the rest was just girls talking. So anyways, I am here today to talk about in our prayer journal, um, our scripture writing. So if you got the kit, you received a set of five stickers. All right. So pull the stickers out, pull your journal out. And remember, I said we're going to go back here behind the home page that we put in. And I said we're going to go here, but we're going to go one more over. And there's a reason for that. So just take your stickers and mark your spot. And then we will come back to that. Now, those stickers aren't going on that page, so don't go anywhere. All right. They're not going to even be on that page. So hang with me. All right. So I wanted to read this. And this is a. Um, uh, a quote, Melissa Spolstra from the Gospel of John, um, referring to the, I think it's referring to the Gospel of John. Yes. Okay. Is this an, I didn't even look this up. Didn't recognize. Could that be from the Gospel of John? 
okay, maybe in a different translation, or maybe it's a, um, a summation of a passage, but I'm going to read it to you. You guys let me know below. I mean, I, I did not even think about that till just now. So I apologize. Um, so the, the quote goes like this, peace isn't something we create or conjure. It's a gift we receive through close relationship with who the Prince of Peace. So I wanted to talk about what are the ways that we can have that peace. So I had a couple conversations with a situation we have that we're, we've been dealing with. And, you know, sometimes you have to step back in situations and just let everybody have their space. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. And, and having a recent conversation about that, um, if every time you're with that person and they're not happy or they're um, not, you know, they're definitely not warm, there's, there's, and you've asked and you've asked and you've said how much you love them, there's a point where sometimes you have to just step back for a while and just pray for them. And that's kind of where we've been at. And there's nothing easy about that. And recently, I think I shared this with you guys. There, um, I was watching, I know I shared it with you guys, there was a talk show and they had on a gentleman who was talking about a, um, oh, and I just blanked it on the author again. Oh, goodness, it'll come to me before it's over. But anyways, it's called, it's a book. Hold on. The author is, hold on, um, Karen Kingsbury. Yes, Karen Kingsbury. So anyways, um, there's a series they did. They put it out on Prime, on um, Amazon Prime, and it's called The Baxters. And it's this family that just looks perfect and everything just looks perfect. And the kids all look perfect. And there's some that even seem like they're super committed to the Lord. And then as life goes on, Satan loves to attack the, the church and the family. This family begins to be under attack. And the parents are just watching their kids struggle. And there's nothing worse than watching your children struggle when they're young, when they're older, and then when they become their own adults. Um, it's heartbreaking. And you love them and you don't know how to reassure them how much you love them. And yet, just you even saying that makes them upset. And um, I, 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 you know, you don't understand what to do in those situations. And you watch this family and you see them going through it and you think, wow, they are really going through it. And, and sometimes it's, you know, it can be a workmate. Sometimes it can be your boss. Sometimes it can be your spouse. Sometimes it can be your parents. Sometimes it can be, you know, your children. Sometimes it can be um, your grandchildren. Sometimes it can be your neighbor. I mean, we went through a season with a neighbor that he got very upset and, we had witnessed him. We'd invited him to come to church with us. And, you know, we were, he, he got, he got all out of shape over a little bitty shrub. And because of the way he reacted or the way he acted, our reaction was, whoa, wait a minute. Like what in the world is going on here? And we're like, no, no, within the bylaws, this is how it's supposed to be because we were in a homeowner association. And he just got way out of whack. And and it was heartbreaking. And finally, you know, they had a, an emergency. Um, it was a weird thing way back when in the early days of monitors. Um, the her She was on the phone talking to someone and it came through our baby monitor. And I got up and I had to run from the living room all the way around through the dining or the eating area into the kitchen to get to the monitor and turn it off because we had a window through, but I couldn't reach through because there were chairs there or something I couldn't remember. Anyways, um, or table, there was a table there. And I mean, I ran to go turn it off because I was like, oh my goodness, I'm listening. I'm hearing her conversation. Well, come to find out they had a family emergency and I immediately turned everything off and I just prayed about like, what do I do? So I walked over and I knocked on her door and I said, hey, I want you to know that first off, you know, this happened. I rushed to turn it off. Um, it's never happened before. It'll probably never happen again. Um, but for some reason I was able to hear, you know, your, your conversation and I just want you to know we're here, whatever we can do to help, we are here and I'm so sorry. What can I do to help? And it was great. There were, 
it was a very healing time, but for some reason he couldn't let go. And she hadn't got involved and, you know, because she'd been our neighbor longer. They, they got together later. Um, and anyways, we end up, my husband takes a job. We end up selling our home and having to move. And our home kind of sits there for a little while. But we were in the middle of a top of a T street. So we were right there in the middle. And we always had the, the neighborhood parties where people came to our house. They would come to our backyard through birthday parties or, you know, just barbecues or whatever. We'd stand there and we'd all chat, you know, out front. And we were kind of the in-between. And all of a sudden, you know, we weren't there. And um, we had packed and moved within like, it was literally like within two weeks. My husband took a job. He had to be there in two weeks. So we went and moved to Wimberley for the first time, which is a little town in the hill country that was kind of halfway. And that way I could keep coming back to our the city, take the kids to their um, homeschooling co-op and their things that they were still involved in. And, um, but we had to move on, find a different church, you know, the whole thing. And we'd been out looking for houses and couldn't find anything. And praise God, we didn't buy anything. It took a while for our house to sell. And then, and we were staying and my parents, um, they had an extra townhouse there. So we stayed in it. And then, um, and then when we moved back, our house had sold. We were able to purchase another home and we had moved back to the city. But the crazy thing was I went back, we had moved, we'd done the majority of the packing. My husband had brought in these ladies that helped me pack, um, very sweet ladies. And so we packed as much as humanly possible. We left a couch, a little tiny TV, and um, a few things. My clothes were still in the closet. That was the only thing I hadn't really moved. I'd moved some clothes, but you know, not, I just left the closet full. And um, anyways, um, which was great because when we would go back to the city to take the kids to homeschooling co-op, if it was cold and it got, weirdly enough, it, we were living further north, but sometimes it was colder down south and it was up north. And so I would go and run by the house and pick up a jacket or a sweater or whatever, you know. Anyways, but I was there one day and I was packing out and, and, um, our babysitter that we almost never used to babysit her, but a friend's daughter finally just said, will you please come to San Antonio and I'll watch the children and you go out, please. And and if you want, I'll come to Wimberley and I'll take care. She was so sweet. And I was like, oh, honey. I mean, I just gave her a big hug and just loved her. And, and I still do to this day. I mean, an amazing young lady in our life. And um, so, like, we would take them to the house. And then, you know, the kids would have to camp out and, and anyway, she babysit at the house and it was all good. You know, we still had a refrigerator, we had everything there. So she was still good. But, um, anyways, so long story short, I had to go back and do a final pack out because we finally, we got someone that wanted to buy the house and I was doing a final pack out and the neighbor came over the gentleman. And he came over and he knocked on the door and I guess my husband had left to go get, I don't know, I didn't even go get something probably boxes or something. And he came in and he goes, you know, I was on the floor packing, you know, sitting on the floor and he, um, or on my knees or something. I just remember being low and him standing in the doorway and he said, can I, can I come in? I said, sure. You know, he's come in. And he said, you know, he said, I, I really miss y'all. And I said, Oh, well, we miss you too. You know, and we're so sad not to be here with you guys. And he said, um, I'm really sorry that I just let this get out of hand and, and, you know, and he just kind of just talked and I, I just listened and I said, well, we all had our faults in this, you know, but you know, we still love you guys. And, you know, we're just so glad that you are our neighbors. And he would go on and say, yeah, man, who am I going to have competitions on? Who's got the better yard with and who am I, you know, just the things, you know, cause like they had a key to our house. He would always come in and take care of our, our dogs when we traveled. And yeah, I mean, you know, we were that, like when she had her baby prematurely, we stored some of the breast milk in our freezer. I mean, it was, that's how it was. We were all pretty close. And anyways, but I remember there was nothing we could say or do to bridge the gap with him. There was nothing. It didn't, there was nothing we could do, but we could just turn it over to God and pray. And it took, it took something drastic that forever changed the relationship, that forever changed the opportunity of enjoying the relationship while we were together. And 
there are things in life that, of course, you get into difficult situations and you don't know what to do and then it becomes toxic and you don't know really what to do. What do you do? So I was talking to two different people today about this and I was just, you know, I finally just said sometimes you have to just step back and give the other person or the other people room, give them, you know, space and just pray. That's all you can do. And so as I thought about, no, there's more you can do. There's more you can do. And today we're going to talk about it. So that's my very long intro, but I'm excited to talk about this. So our five verses for the month are, and I will read them, they are um, for, uh, Proverbs 17, 22, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. So in light of what I just said, it is really hard to not get down in life when things are difficult. But we need to keep our mind on things above, not on things of the earth. We need to focus on Jesus and recognize that a merry heart doeth good like medicine. We know that negativity can physically tear us down. And as somebody who went through so many years of just abuse <laughs> um, from an extended family member that was catastrophic, um, there is a Hallmark, I think it's a Hallmark movie, and it, there's this woman and she goes, it is catastrophic. The, that person had a catastrophic effect on everyone. I mean, marriages, children. It was, it was, it was the definition of an insanity to stay in that situation. That was a very toxic, dangerous relationship. And um, people were injured because of it. Marriages were ruined because of it, etc. And so, and I had, did not believe at first that those things were happening. I just couldn't believe that anybody would do something like that. And then finally I realized it is happening. And wow. And, and I still, to this day, I pay for an injury because of that situation. And um, matter of fact, I'm getting ready to make an appointment with a new doctor and see what we can do about my joints. And uh, yeah, so... You look at, and, and the places where I have had so many broken bones. So you look at that and you could either like get totally down. And so today I'm tired and I found myself getting down and I was talking to a very trusted person in my life and I realized I'm just so negative. I've got to stop and a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. That scripture is invaluable in our walk, in our health, in our mental health, in our um, our service to God, etc. So, the second verse is, The word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Psalms 119, 105, which is, I know, hold on to that verse because it's going to affect what we're going to talk about. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. Psalms 56, 3. Amen. And that, there are times that we go through these situations in life and then we just get fearful or we get sad or we get angry or we get um, just overwhelmed and it can be like almost you know chemical you can almost like taste it you know in your mouth the, it kind of does that adrenaline thing and you get that that metal kind of taste and so you have to recognize when those things are happening what's it happening to your body what's happening to your relationship with the Lord what's happening with your walk what's happening with your witness because Satan would love to rip you down. He would love to rip you down. So let's keep going. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Psalms 121.2. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Psalms 121.2. That's who we turn to. That's who we trust. And then our last verse is encourage one another and build each other up. 1 Thessalonians 5.11. So I have made a big deal about being encouraging in the comments. Um, I have got several comments. They're already posted. I just skimmed them um, late last night because, you know, we've had such weird internet. And I want to say thank you to everyone who is commenting. The comments are going out. I'll go back in and answer and, and you know, heart and do all the good stuff with it. But I just want to say to you, everyone who puts a post down there, I don't care if we grow one more person. I, I mean, unless, it, you know, the Lord's going to encourage them and that would be a good thing. But my point being is I don't care about the numbers. I used to care about the numbers. I don't care about the numbers because every YouTuber looks at numbers because 
there are certain things that happen at certain numbers, there's no doubt. But what I care about is having a community that can love each other, that can encourage each other, that can pray for each other, because this world is a difficult place. And if we don't have a place where we can come together and fellowship and talk, um, I do have a YouTube, uh, pardon me, a, a Facebook that I'm trying to determine. Some of y'all have found it and asked, you know, to friend. And of course, you're very welcome to um, Josephine's Designs. And you're very welcome to. Um, I kind of have a private one that I added on, kind of a business one, you know, with Josephine's Designs in mind. Um, one of the things I will look at um, probably in May is how to activate that and let that be a safe place that is very protected, that people can come together that we can share and chat amongst each other. Um, I know there's problems with Facebook. Um, I have a problem with the origin of Facebook as well, my husband and I both. Um, and we have a familial history with Facebook that was not healthy. So um, unless you guys have some other ideas, um, I can look into that at May. But leave a comment below. If you guys, um, there is also... Oh, what's that other one? Not decor. Um, anyways, I, I have a membership there from another thing I was involved in. So there's a lot of different options out there. But if you guys have an idea where we could come together and encourage and chat online, um, let me know. Um, I would be glad to. Um, you know, a monthly Zoom. any Whatever you guys would like to do, let me know. Let me know. All right, so we have these... Um, Please give me ideas on encouraging each other in our faith journey. Okay, guys? And, okay, so I'm going to put these back right there. So I'm going to go through an article that I've highlighted and written some things on, and I got it from Crosswalk. And I I think it's from Crosswalk, and but I will post it on the website. I was debating, should I post it? But I do have the author's name. It's by Meg Butcher. Butcher. I'm not sure how you say that. B-U-C-H-E-R. Butcher. I don't know. But, um, but I do want the whole focus for April is this one verse. This one verse. Thy word I have hid in my heart. Psalms 119.11, and the rest of that verse is basically the word of I, I've hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So the hiding God's word in our heart is how we get through these things. So we've been doing scripture writing. We have our scripture for the month. I'm going to challenge everybody to memorize one verse outside of thy word I've hid in my heart, okay? <laughs> There's a story of somebody we knew that had a hard time memorizing scripture. The only scripture he knew was that one. So... I'm going to give you a little bit more encouragement to, and we're going to talk about in this article, you'll go back and read it, you know, print it out, highlight it, circle, write on it, put what you want to do, set your goals, etc. So, all right. Thy word I've hid in my heart, Psalms 119, 11. Um, What does thy word I've hid in my heart mean? So Moses wrote down this law and gave it to Levitical priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and all the elders of Israel. In Deuteronomy 31, 9, thy word I've hid in my heart. God's word is meant to be placed at the center of our lives, in the center. So when we adopted our youngest daughter, um, we moved across country and every single one of us was struggling except for the littlest one. And I used to always say, she didn't care where we were, what we were doing, as long as we were all four there and she was in the middle. She just wanted to be surrounded with people she knew. We were her fifth home by 19 months. So it was imperative to me that even though we moved across country and then we moved back to Texas, um, it was important to me that she knew who loved her and who would take care of her. And she was able to quickly see that and identify that. So, um, the NIV Bible explains, ancient treaties specified that a copy of a treaty was to be placed before the gods at the religious centers of the nations involved. For Israel, that meant to place it in the Ark of the Covenant before the one true God. Um, for New Testament Christ followers, we have the living God living in us through the Holy Spirit from Jesus Christ. This means 
through the daily disciplines of reading the Bible, prayer, and worship, we have the Holy Spirit to help us understand, remember, and apply God's wisdom to our daily lives. We have a one-on-one relationship with Jesus, with the Lord. When we're talking about Old Testament, before Jesus died on that cross and the veil uh, was ripped in the Holy of Holies, you had to go through the priest who then had to go before the Lord on behalf of each person. And so you have to recognize that what Jesus did was insane as far as like the torturous portion of it. But then there was this gift he gave us. And that was not only a seeing God the flesh when he came to this earth and having that recorded, but then also that he opened the door to go to God the Father one-on-one. So when I pray, I don't pray, I don't have to go see a priest and then the priest prayer prays it and, you know, I just sit there quietly. You know, I have to tell the priest, the priest prays it. No, I don't have to do that anymore. I can go directly to God. I can apologize to God. I can seek repentance. And so this is such a gift. This is such a gift. So, but that was put in the Ark of the Covenant. All right, now, which was inside the temple, right? Okay, okay. We, we probably don't need to go into that, but all right. So, but it was relationship. It was giving us a relationship with the Lord. All right. The Hebrew root of word designates God's revelation. God's word reveals wisdom, understanding, and perspective that we would not have without his divine hand reaching into our hearts through the Bible. It becomes our foundation and God builds upon our lives in layers of truth, conviction, instruction, encouragement, and love that flow from the supernatural power of the scripture when we seek him there. This habit over a lifetime allows us to develop the relationship with God we were meant to have and that he desires with us. That his truth becomes a part of who we are and how and why we live our daily lives. This way entails both treasuring, zealously guarding God's word in one's heart as well as meditating on it, internalizing, memorizing it, pondering it over and over, considering how it applies to one's situation. And we're going to talk about this more, but praying it. Okay. The Moody Bible Commentary explains, and I've got it right there, (laughs) this should form a lifelong habit of hiding God's word in his heart so that as not to sin against the Lord. So when we focus on the word, when we focus on scripture, when we are having those sleepless nights, those agonizing times, those times where we're just so exhausted by the situation, focusing on the word helps. It just helps. Now, created in his image, we were purposed to bring glory to God through our lives here on earth. The biggest expression of love of all time was God's sacrifice of his son, Jesus on the cross. And Jesus, though he prayed and wept that there would be any other way, went willingly. Our sins are forgiven. And this line of communication and personal relationship between God and humanity is available through the acceptance of Jesus Christ. Our belief in him ushers the Holy Spirit into our very souls, allowing us to hide and build upon God's wisdom within our very hearts and minds. So I'm sorry, he turned on the vacuum down there and he talks louder when he has the vacuum on. I'm so sorry. <clears throat> but there are going to be 10 things that we're going to review. And I challenge you right now, stop Get a pen, open up your book, take some your journal, whatever journal you're working from. This, you know, the journal kit that we give out or that we that we have available here on the on this um, uh, this channel. Or you just go get a notebook, get a piece of paper, get a notebook piece of paper, get a scratch piece of paper, get Xerox piece of paper. And I think these notes are worth it. I think it would have been I should have said that when we started, but you can rewind. And so far, I've given you one, two verses, but uh, it gives you things to do, to to look up and to meditate on. Just a second, I'm going to take a sip. And I'm out. Okay. All right. So, 10 practical ways to hide God's word in our hearts. Every word of God is flawless. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Proverbs 35. Chapter 30, verse 5. Proverbs. 
Again, every word of God is flawless. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Okay, so number one, we read the Bible. Set aside a time, start with five minutes, and prayerfully ask God to meet us there. Funnily enough, I was just watching a Christian gal here on YouTube, and um, she was applying very similar principles. She must have read the same article in her um, acrostic um, for the word she's encouraging with her next study. And um, when I was listening to it, I thought, because I was um, resting my eyes, but I turned it on and just kind of listening really hard to what she was saying, I'm recognizing now that um, these are all very, very important things. Um, maybe she didn't read this article. Maybe she did. I don't know. But it is so important to have a time every day. When my children were little, I would get up before them. So um, on the days that I would go to Bible study, I have to be there 930. And I had two toddlers or children under, you know, well, they were toddlers. They were four and two or whatever. Um, I would um, get up at like 5 a.m. And I would have that quiet time. And I would spend that time with the Lord. Um, sometimes it was preparing my, for my Bible study. Sometimes it was just my daily devotional. And I remember for you mamas that are like, how in the world do I have any time? So I show you guys all the time our daily bread, these little short devotionals. I used to keep those in my downstairs bathroom. And it was the one place I could go in the house and shut the door because I was right off the living room. So if the children need, you know, I could put the gate up so I could run to the restroom, you know, that kind of a thing. And um, long story short, I remember sitting in Bible study and this one sweet mom, because um, I was referring to the devotional I had read. So I had read my Bible study. I had read the Bible and I had also prepared my lesson. And um, she was like, um, Chris, how did you do that? Cause she, but she had three under the age of five. And so I was like, well, honestly, I keep it in my bathroom. <laughs> so the door, I can go close the door. Um, now when I do my big Bible study, of course I have to, I did it in my, my chair, you know, my rocker, my rocker recliner. But, um, you know, we had a, an old, old rocker I learned to walk on. All my children learned to walk on it and then it finally died. But, um, and then I also had, um, a rocker recliner and the rocker recliner was my husband's, but when he was gone, yes, mommy sat in that chair. <laughs> and, um, anyways, to make a long story short, the great thing was, is that when our son came, like I would get up before them and then our son would came climbing down the steps because he could see the light was on. And I would get up with my husband. He always went into work early. Um, he worked uh, four tens and then they had Fridays off and then he did contracting on the weekends and um, our consulting kind of stuff. Anyways, and um, sorry, I got a little stuffy nose. Um, what was interesting is that when he came down at two years old, I remember he, he would like go really slow. He was a delayed walker talker. So he would go really slow at two coming down the steps. He was so careful. And I remember him looking at me going, Oh, mama Bible. And he would go back or mommy Bible. And we go back upstairs because my kids never call me mama. They call me mommy, mommy Bible. And I was like, Oh no, it's okay, honey. You can come down and sit with me. I'm almost done. And sometimes I would say, yes, I just need to have a little bit longer. Do you want to go play toys? You know, and he would be like, yes, yes. And so, um, but then there were times he'd come and just sit. The, the recliner had a big wide arm on it. And he would just sit right up here um, with my, uh, you know, kind of partially on me and then on the chair. And, sorry, partially on me and then on the chair. And he would sit there while I read my Bible and worked with my study or, or just was reading. And I remember when that, that sweet gal said this to me in Bible study or ladies Bible study, I looked at her and I was just like, what, what do you mean? And I realized at that point that I wasn't the only one having a hard time finding time each day. Um, that's very real when your children are little, when you have sick family members, when you're very, very busy with work, when your parents are ill, you know, you think about all these things where all these people are wanting your time and your attention and your energy. And I mean, people look at me and go, you don't have anything to do. Well, that's only recently where we finally had to put up some boundaries and say, I can't take care of everyone. I cannot, we cannot take care of everyone. We are way, way behind 
on our property, in our lives, in our health journeys. We have to set boundaries. Well, the first thing we know, um, I should have brought it. I'll bring it in another Bible study uh, or another devotional time. Um, there's a great book called Creative Counterpart by Linda Dillo. Excellent read. Um, and then there's a short Bible study in the back. And I read it privately and did the Bible study. And then my ladies Bible study said, would you please bring this and would you please teach this? And so that was the first time. And I said, no, but I'll do a chapter and we'll each take a chapter. How's that? And um, the regular leader kind of struggled with it, but it was good. It was such a good opportunity to think through what God's design was and for me, especially at that time in my life. And, um, and it's still applicable today. But um, I don't have a ton of extra time. I have the kind of time that right now I can, um, hold on one second, guys. Thank you, <laughs> Amazon. So anyways, but I have the time now if I manage my time correctly. And, um, and some of that is right now, um, even like this afternoon, part of managing my time wisely was resting. Um, I did not realize how tired I was. Um, I was talking to someone, they were talking about um, somebody who was ill, and I found myself crying, you know, like like they didn't know it. I don't think they knew it, but I found myself, I was crying for that person. And I just realized, wow, I mean, wow, we think we have it bad health-wise, and then we hear stories about these other people, and then your just heart breaks for them, and then you pray for them. And anyways, but um, but as we go through this part of our life, we need to focus on what are God's priorities in our life. So I'm going to keep going. So Bible study, time with the Lord, priority one. Okay, so another way that we can hide God's word in our heart is to journal. It's hard to focus, but we can write a prayer to God each day before diving into scripture. Do you do that? So when my parents were dying, many of you know, um, I journaled heavily. I just had a faith journal by um, Happy Planner, and it literally had just like this much for every day. It was a horizontal, and there was scripture on the page. It was so helpful, but I would just write every day that much every night before I went to bed. It was very gratitude-oriented, but it was also very, Lord, today was so difficult. Today, Mom, today you know, the the people that were helping today, the doctors today, you know, and, and I would try to end it with a very, even though it was like me pouring out my heart saying, you know, this is killing me, God, this is the hardest thing, you know, to watch my parents be so ill and, and, um, just the different battles within it. And then to turn around and try to end it with, but thank you, God, I love you, Lord. And I would sign every time love K, the letter K. And I just felt like it was very personal between the Lord and I. So write your prayers to God. You can write him prayers of praise. You can write him prayers of, of you know, um, requests. You know, please help me, Lord. Please, you know, show me your way. Show me your will. You know, anything like that. And then you can pray for others. This is your opportunity to take that time. Like we collectively have prayed for Donna and her husband Wayne because he's had this surgery this week and he will continue on. He will have another surgery in May. He will also have probably, it sounds like treatments within this time period. So we have an opportunity to love and pray for others. And that can also be in your prayer, in your journal. You can write your prayers. So, all right. And then the third thing is pray scripture. So I mentioned this a minute ago. It is invaluable to pray scripture. I cannot speak that enough. Um, there is There are promises in God's word. There are um, things that we can claim in God's word. There are things that God, you know, um, is commanding us to do. You know, um, it, there are things that we can pray it out with the Lord and just meditate on it and focus on that scripture and then just keep asking the Lord, you know, get alone, go sit in a pretty place. I was looking today. So my little prayer garden we've set up, we've got to get my last few plants moved over. Um, and then I'll plant a few more because I went today in between, uh, my husband and I went today in between um, his doctor's appointment and my um, test. We had a, about an hour's time. So we drove up to Kyle and went to the H-E-B Central, you know, H-E-B Market or uh, Garden Center. That's what it is, Garden Center, because they have a big one. 
and we don't have that many nurseries in our area so this is a really big nice place and they're very affordable and um so we drove over and I was able to find some things I've been looking at online and I do a lot of research. So I read, I study, I look at, you know, like what do I want to put in this place? If I lost something, why did I lose it? What do I need to prevent that? You know, that kind of a deal. And so I came back with a very small amount and my husband literally filled the vehicle. It was to the roof, literally to the roof, baby. And so, um, anyways, um, but, you know, when we are in these places and we're doing these things, um, it gives us an opportunity to build places out to have your war room. You can have a war room inside. When my daughter moves out and that room becomes like an office, that will be my war room, office, and a guest room for when people come. It's going to be multi-purposed. And when it becomes my war room, there will be all my Bible journaling things in there. And people are going to look at it and go, but you have a craft cottage and you have stuff in the office. And I do, but this stuff's coming out of the office and that room will have all of my kit building and my prayer journals out in there and faith journaling. And that is a big thing for me because, um, it's just going to be something that I believe that needs to be in the house. There needs to be a place where I can go. I don't know if you could hear, my husband walked in a minute ago, walked back out. My daughter walked into the kitchen, the alarm went off, you know, just noise. This is Amazon came. I'm saying hello, you know, thank you. So it's good to have that place where we can go and get alone with the Lord. And for me, I've built out my prayer garden that is just tons of flowers. And I'll try to get some pictures up here soon. Um, maybe on the website. I can put them on Instagram too. But um, I just think at this point, um, you know, I was picking up some additional flowers and I felt kind of like, well, maybe I shouldn't. I'm going to use seeds and I've already planted a bunch of seeds. And, um, but I just felt like the Lord said, no, 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 those are your favorites. Go ahead, honey. And, you know, there are times I feel like God kind of talks to me like that. You know, he's my heavenly father. You know, the way I talk to, him, you know, children and my children, my grandchildren is honey, sweetie, baby, you know, all those good words. And it's to show affection that you love them. And, um, you know, that's just what it is. So anyways, but this third one says, if there's a particular issue we face, we can Google scripture. Amen. That apply to those issues. Or we can go to Blue Letter Bible, Bible Gateway, Bible Study Hub. There's all kinds of resources, apps, free tools. Always, you can get a concordance. You can get a Strong's concordance. So you can do all kinds of things. Always read study Bible notes to make sure to understand the verse in context. So I don't like pulling out one verse. I like to read the passage. That I highly recommend. Um, and then you can also research a verse. You can find out the history behind it. Like we did with our 12 days of Christmas. We talked about the history of that season in, um, our calendar as believers. Um, then we can write out those verses in prayer to God, replace general items with personal pronouns because his word is meant for each of us individually. Do you pray? As I walked around yesterday morning, looking at my flowers, looking at, the gardens, looking at um, our veggies and, you know, all the fruit and everything that we've planted, I was just thanking God. And then today when I walked around looking at my flowers, I was just like, oh Lord, thank you. And you guys grow and you know, the whole thing. And, and I just find myself thanking God. And I found that to be true in all of these situations to stop and just praise God for the gifts he's given you and I is such an important part of our day. And we, 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 when we walk along the roadside, we pray without ceasing scripture tells us, are we doing that? And are we doing it in our journaling? Are we praying scripture back to God? It's an important thing. All right. Now, and, and, you know, if I, if you didn't catch what I said earlier, we can pray scripture and claim it, you know, and I'm not a name it and claim it person, but we can ask God his will and pray a verse and say, God, I am taking this, um, right now. I'm trusting you. I'm going to pray this verse to you for this area of my life. If I have this wrong, please teach me your will, your way. And that's a great way to go about praying scripture. Number four, we can study the Bible. We can, reading a Bible, reading a study Bible can help to find words and describe people, places, and events in the Bible to help us understand them better. Okay. 
That's pretty self-explanatory. Number five, Jesus cards. For a small investment, a box of cards that have scriptures written on them can be used as bookmarks placed in places we see often and serve as a reminder of God's word laced into the everyday corners of our lives. So, yes, and you don't have to buy them. You can literally get index cards and make your own. They are literally index cards. They used to be like a dollar. I guess you can give it the Dollar Tree for $1.25. But there was something I did. Hold on in. I'm going to have to stand up. So hang with me because my knees are giving me lots of fits today. Oh, I don't know what that noise was, but I rubbed up against something there. Sorry. Oh, it's the, it's the table. I was like, what in the world was that? I bought this set, and you can see where they've just worn out. They're so old. I bought this set, <coughs> pardon me, from Doorpost years ago. And you can find them now everywhere. You can go to, um, let me turn that off so you can see better. You can go to Etsy, purchase PDFs. You can do it. You can create them on your Word documents. But I bought these, and then I went, ooh, I'm a bad housekeeper. Can you see that dust? Um, then um, I... Um, Sorry, it's in a place it isn't always easy to get to, and with my knees the way they are, it's kind of hard. So, okay, hopefully that makes it a little bit more presentable. But um, I bought these, and the interesting thing was, so I bought them, and when we moved back to San Antonio, um, I framed these with these inexpensive, probably from Dollar General, because at that time that's kind of all we had that was cheap. Dollar General, Walmart, these are very inexpensive frames. I have them throughout my house. Um, I want to think, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 of these um, throughout the house, in my bathroom, in my hallway, in my, by my front door, you know, set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Psalms 141, 3, New King James Version. And I think you could get King James and New King James. I don't know if they still sell them. I didn't think about it, but I'm just sharing this with you. Um, this was huge. This was just huge. It was just huge. Um, if you're not careful, you won't see them after a while. But on each side, right here is my door. On each side, I have scripture framed and hung as we go out the door. And whether my children read it or not, it was there. But when I hung this, when we purchased our last home we owned in San Antonio, I had hung these throughout the house. I had other things up for our homeschooling that had scripture all throughout it. And our caseworker was um, Jewish by birth. I don't think she was a practicing Jew. Um, but the interesting thing was she was against us on everything. She was anti-homeschooling. Her husband was a professor. Anti-homeschooling. Um, and wasn't a Christian, anti, you know, us taking our older children to China with us. Just there were a lot of things. And by the time we came back, we had loved our trip so much. Um, she said, um, I'm going to put that back on so I can read in a minute. She, she said, y'all have become the poster child, that you're the family, you're my poster family that I tell everybody about. And I said, really? Oh my. And I mean, we were very honest in the adoption process, the abuse my husband had dealt with as a child, the abuse that I had dealt with. We were very honest when we lost our, our child, um, our first child, well, she was second in birth order, but the first child we lost of two. Um, and it was very gut-wrenching. And um, we were very honest about everything. We, you know, um, we're still friends to this day. I mean, we, we love her. And, and she was like, I was against everything about you everything about you and now I love everything about you and I and I can only think that that was because of God's word God's word that hung in our home God's word that we could share without you know because I'm terrible at knowing addresses so a lot of times I'll quote something and I'm like you know in the Bible if you don't mind can I share this it's it says this and so I'll share it when I'm out and about and a lot of times that you know I'll say it's in the book of John or it's in the book of Psalms or it's in the book of Proverbs or it's you know I mean I'll always try at the reference um, but the amazing thing what God does is if I'm not quoting a verse per verbatim and I apply it you know, like if I say, you know, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And this is your opportunity right now. Just trust the Lord. He's got a plan. You know, lean not under your own understanding. Don't, don't try to figure this out just like I do it. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Just know who God is. Trust him. Believe in him. Acknowledge everything he's done in your life. And he'll make your path straight. 
He's going to guide your step. He's got a will for your life. He's got a plan for your life. You have just got to trust that. And I can't tell you how many times that God has used those kind of conversations and how grateful I am because not only does it hopefully feed and edify the other person. I mean, I've never had anybody say, you know, I won't talk about that. I've never had that happen. It will happen, but I've never had it happen. And the other, I mean, I had people follow me out of stores, out of, you know, I'm just out of a hotel, out of other places. And the thing is, you know, let God use that opportunity to, to encourage the people around you. But also guess what you get out of it? He encourages my heart. It's just like a teacher when they teach, they learn sometimes more than the students because they have to prepare. They have to prepare the lesson. They have to read all the resources and weed out what they don't want to do and use and not, you know, all of that. So it's it's really important, you know, to, to have that word everywhere you can have it around you so that when it comes time, you are standing ready to give an account of who Jesus is and who he is in your life. Okay. Another way is to have devotional books, devotionals that you go through. Just like I said, that little devotional um, from our daily bread. Yeah, those are invaluable. I keep them in my car. I keep them in my bags. I keep them everywhere. I give them away. I keep them in my car so I can give them away. Yes. And even like devotionals, some churches put out a devotional. I have one that it's a little faded from the sun. Still beautiful. Nobody would know it's faded but me. I put it in the armrest today because I had it in the window. And, um, yeah, I will pass that out next week when I go up to Austin. Yeah. I mean, I just love to give those things away. Um, um, so devotional books, not to be used as a replacement to the Bible, but alongside can provide great perspective for the walk or stage of life we are in. Now, a lot of devotionals do have scripture and some of them even have places they have a, they have scripture and then they have a, a, a devotional area where they tell a story. They try to, you know, make alive that scripture and, and bring it to heart. And then they, some of them have at the end a place where you can journal. And then some even have a prayer there. And so these are lovely tools that we can use. But definitely reading God's word is the most important thing. Um, opening your Bible. Um, I was getting pictures yesterday, day before yesterday, downloading them for different things for Josephine's design. And one of them was a dusty, dusty Bible that, put, put, that somebody had written like on the back of a car, you know, somebody writes, wash me. Well, it said, read me. And I was like, at first I just passed right over it. And then I went, I, it kind of hit me and I thought, oh no, we got to get that one. <laughs> so we all can get our Bibles dusty if we're not careful. All right. Now, um, podcasts are another um, encouragement in, you know, from short devotionals to entire sermons, podcasts are a great way to hide God's word in our hearts as we drive, um, work and walk through the days. So, um, I cannot say enough that when you hear someone teaching, they really need to focus on the word. They need to recite word. I, I need to work on this myself. Um, and I love where they go line by line by line, which is expository preaching or teaching. I love that type of teaching. And literally, there have been things with that new radio that I put in my kitchen where I'm listening to the Christian channel all day. Um, I'm literally looking at buying two more, one for my bedroom and one for when I move into that office, um, my war room. And mainly because there are some fantastic preachers on there. I mean, literally, I wake up, there's Tony Evans while I make the coffee. And then um, I told my husband, he walked in the other day, I said, Brother Tony, he is kicking it right now. <laughs> my husband started laughing. He goes, I heard him. I heard him. You know, and then um, my husband's heard an old uh, preacher he liked. Um, a really long time ago preacher. And then um, I was hearing John MacArthur last night and it was so invaluable. What I was hearing, it was something I, my heart needed to hear. So um, so email subscriptions. So sub subscribe online to subscriptions that will, uh, will send articles, prayers, devotionals, podcasts, and more right to our phones and computers. Websites can do this as well. Blogs can do this. It helps us to remember God's word throughout the day and often meets us where where we're all, I think it's supposed to be, we, meets us where, meets us where we are with a particular question, struggle, or piece of encouragement. Sorry, um, I had read that, it's highlighted, but I did not, okay, my brain, you know how you skip when you read? I know, sorry. Okay, um, 
Nine, worship music. Music is a wonderful way to knit God's word on our hearts. Um, so many songs are truths straight from scripture put to a melody that easily becomes stuck in our minds and hidden in our hearts. They can become anthems for seasons we walk through with Jesus. So I think I've shared this with you. When our son was young, he was a delayed walker talker. And so I would go in every morning and he'd be in his crib and I would be like, stand up, stand up for, and I would, you know, lift him up, stand up, stand up. And I would lift him up for Jesus. And he kind of danced because he was a big old boy and I, he was big baby. And I would just kind of dance with him while he was waking up. You know, he, he had already been awake, but you know, he, he was finally up on his feet and I would dance with him for a few minutes. And then I would lift him up and of course, you know, hug and cuddle him. But it was such a big deal that I would sing that um, hymn to him each morning. And then when my all of my children and when my grandmother and my parents both died, I would hum the old record cross. And um, whenever we traveled with our babies, they could go to sleep anywhere because they knew that song meant it was time to go night night. And it was just such an invaluable thing. And on um, Easter resurrection morning, when we went to our church's sunrise service, they opened with the old rugged cross and then they finished with victory in Jesus, which is one of my husband's favorite hymns. And, um, and there's a really good memory with that as well. And I just can't tell you how, when times are tough, I will sing hymns. I will sing Christian songs, you know, going through a difficult time. Nobody knows what what I'm going through. Nobody knows what they say about you. Nobody knows the real you. Um, there's a kind of love that God only knows. There's a kind of, there's a, there's a kind of love. So when we hear songs like that, that's King, um, King and Country. Nobody knows that. I, I was going through a terrible time and nobody could understand the garbage I was going through. And yet everybody was expecting me to give, 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 take care of, do everything. And I look back at that and I had no ability to turn around and say, no, that's enough. You guys step up and do your part. And that's my fault. And I shouldn't even have to like raise my voice to say it. But I recognized I did not set healthy boundaries. But that song spoke to my soul. When my father died, um, there's a song by Mercy Me, um, Even If. And it, I remember we were driving from Wimberley the last time that the house would never, we would never stay in it again. And that song came on and I just remember trying to sing it with my youngest in the car and tears were just rolling down my face. And there's a part to this very day, if I sing that song, because everybody sings it out loud, because if it comes on, I'm like, turn it up, nobody talk, you know. And um, I choke up every time, because it was so impacting in my life. So sing to the Lord, find for your children, your grandchildren, you know, scripture songs, you know, there's... Um, was it Steve Green did a lot of scripture songs that I never tapped into like a silly person for my children. Um, he was a little bit ahead of me. Um, but as I look back now, they're great. And I believe me, my children have tons of resources, <laughs> but, um, scripture is so invaluable in our walk and knowing it deep in our hearts. Okay. Um, worship music. Music is a wonderful way to knit God's word in our hearts, so many songs, truths, straight from scripture, put to melody that easily becomes stuck in our minds and in our hearts. I'm rereading this again because it's so good. They can become anthems for seasons we walk through with Jesus. So just like I'm saying, there are certain things that apply to certain seasons. Yeah. Okay. Um, books. Christian authors and publishers abound with books written about the content of the Bible and how to apply it to everyday lives. So when I talk about that book, um, Creative Counterparts by Linda Dillo, excellent resource, excellent tool. Okay, what are the benefits of hiding God's word in your heart? I know this is getting long, I apologize, but I have a fun thing at the end, so hang with me. All right, what are um, purity in this context means free from moral taint, and that is the NIV version. The the voice, and um, pardon me, how can a young person, pardon me, I didn't read the scripture, well, that didn't work, did it? Okay. What are the benefits of hiding God's word in your heart? How can a young person stay on the path of purity? 
by living according to your word. And that is from Psalms 119.9. Um, there are different programs, Awanas, things like that, where children can learn scripture. You can teach your children scripture. You can, I used to record scripture for my um, children and, you know, before they could read and they could listen to the tapes and they could, you know, um, go to Awana, say their verses or just have other verses there. And it's a great opportunity to tell them how much you love them, how much God loves them. I mean, there's just so many things you can do with that, but I made little cassette tapes. Um, all right. Um, purity is in this context this means free from all moral taint, and that was the NIV version. The the voice paraphrase reads, um, this is another translation. How can a young person remain pure? Only by living according to your word. The truth of scripture prepares us. Whether we are in need of helping or healing or searching for the opportunity to share, sorry, I gotta get in the light here, to share our faith, hiding God's word in our heart. So we need to stand ready. We need to be able to give an account. And the best thing we can use is God's word. I'll, I'll share something in a minute about that. Um, the Bible tells us to guard our hearts because everything we do and say flows from it. The benefit of hiding God's word in our hearts is that we would have the self-control and grace-filled perspective to live and speak in a way that is Christ-centered and God-honoring. Hebrews 4.12 reminds us, for the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. <sighs> the attitude of the heart's everything. And if we let it get so polluted with the garbage that can go on in this world, in our lives, in these things, it can overwhelm us. It can completely, I can personally give testimony that it can. And that's why I quote that verse so many times. Keep my mind on things above and not on the things of this earth, Lord. Please help me. And that's from Colossians 3, Colossians 3, 2. Because it will overwhelm us. It will sink us. Anybody who grew up with any kind of verbal abuse, I mean real verbal abuse. I listen to people talk now and I'm not discrediting their, their thoughts that it's abuse, but when you grow up believing without a shadow of a doubt that you are fat, dumb, and ugly, and there is nothing to change that in your brain, I still see, I still hear it. And that wasn't even a smidgen of what I was told. And it wasn't meant to be mean. It was somebody who grew up with abuse themselves, and they didn't know any difference. And there was tremendous um, forgiveness and love and amazing relationship that bloomed beyond that. So I don't ever want to tell one part of the story without the final. And God did so many amazing things in that relationship. But um, it is invaluable that when we can't sleep at night and we quote scripture, we just sit there and we meditate on the word. We just go through our memory verses and we just pray it back to the Lord and let God heal your heart. Let him teach you. Help him to guide you in your prayers through his word. So I have a terrible time memorizing, but... There was a situation I was in with somebody who was very, um, not a healthy person. And God had been preparing my heart to meet with this person after a year. And, and I, the situation kind of changed. I was like, no way, God, no way. I'm going to be eaten alive. There's additional people. I'm not, no Lord. I remember just rolling my eyes at the Lord as I was going up an elevator. I felt kind of badly about that, but I was like, no. And it was, you know, it was, it wasn't like I was rolling my eyes. Like you, you don't know what you're doing, God. It was like, I can't do this, God, um, being overwhelmed. And I realized the person came in, we, she began to ask questions and because God had been preparing my heart through scripture, through Bible study, I went from Old Testament to New Testament, to Old Testament to New Testament, in a little bitty Bible like this, unmarked. So it was a thin line Bible, unmarked. And by God's grace, I mean, I did not answer with my words. I answered with scripture. That, it, there are just moments in life where God's word is what should be said. I don't need to talk. I need to let God speak. Okay. I need to get my stuff out of the way. <laughs> and then sometimes we just love people and we, we try to encourage them. All right. Um, the Bible gives us the ability to discern what is right. The next step to take and provides the comfort, encouragement, discipline, and conviction 
we need for our daily lives. When we are faithful to read it daily through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we are able to recall God's truth when we need it in hard moments, anxious tests, and opportunities to share the gospel, truth, and others. There's a great YouTube channel called Abide where you can hear scripture read or there's just encouragement in, in Christ. Um, I always say go for the scripture if you can. And I literally put headphones on and listen to that to go to sleep. Yeah, during during the pandemic, that's pretty much how I slept because we were going through so much personal during that season, like so many were. And that was my that was my peace of mind. That was where the Prince of Peace helped heal my peace of mind. That's why I wanted that to be there. So, okay. So here's a great scripture. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 reads like this. All scripture is God breathed and useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may thoroughly thoroughly equipped for, uh, I think it's be equipped for every good work. When you raise children, you got to rely on God's word. You have to rely on it. Um, there's going to come a point where they're not going to want to hear it. And I'm going to be honest about that. And even sometimes into adulthood. And that is their walk. I mean, you can't beat them over the head with the Bible ever. Um, but there are times where you say, I, as you are accountable to me, I'm accountable to God. And this I know. So I do this in love because I love you. And you pretty soon will, I mean, you already have a relationship with Jesus. You asked him into your heart. But you, my child, are accountable for knowing God's word and living it out. And there are kids that can know God's word and not live it out. It is not, um, it is not a heart knowledge, unfortunately. And then there are kids that passionately know the word and they put it to the side. And there are kids who, um, who may not be there yet. So, you know, we all want to think everything is going perfectly hunky dory, but we do the best. And, you know, we do our very best for our children. We hope, you know, um, when we let them fly and we let them go, scripture tells us we hope that they'll return, you know, and they'll return to that. So what they were taught in their youth. Okay. Um, all right. So there is a prayer here. I'm going to leave that um, for you guys to read when I post this online. I do want to give a summation that they wrote here that is very good. Faith in Jesus is more than a religion. It's a relationship. It's more than a religion. It's it's not a religion. It's not just a relation. Religion. It is a relationship with Jesus Christ. Um, it goes far beyond following rules and it isn't at all about feeling bad for what we have done wrong past confessing our sin and embracing his forgiveness it goes beyond that um you know think about it um when you have been in a relationship and you've tried to go to that person and you've tried to apologize and they don't really receive it and there's no relationship restored there's not because it just fell on deaf ears it really did there's time you can go and you can apologize for something and they'll say, okay, I accept your apology. And then um, it goes on deaf ears. Then they bring it back up and they bring it back up and they bring it back up and they bring it back up. Okay, there wasn't real forgiveness there. And then there's those relationships where forgiveness is genuinely given and a beautiful relationship comes out of it. And, um, and God so blesses that in your life. And I've shared that with you. The person that was the hardest on me as a child it ended up being one of my closest friends, my very, very closest friends who genuinely wanted the best for me, who loved me, who I loved and wanted the very best for them. So, or for her. So, all right. Um, uh, 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 sorry, guys. Faith in Jesus, living a Christ-centered life is walking with him. It is walking with him. Reading the Bible, hiding God's word in our hearts, is hiding Jesus in our hearts. Remember, because the Word, the Word was God, the Word was, was with God. That's Jesus. When we hide that Word in our heart that I might not sin against thee, it's so what? So that we can know Jesus better. All right. Um, he is the living Word. 
there at the beginning with God, sitting as um, his right, uh, uh, sitting on his right hand now, and has promised to come back again. The more we spend, the more time we spend in Scripture, the better we get to know Jesus, our Savior, our Messiah, our Son of the Son of God, and our friend. So the references for this, the sources were resources were NIV Study Bible. Um, by Zondervan, Moody Bible Commentary, and Moody Publishers, by Moody Publishers. So I'm a huge fan of Moody. Um, all right, now, so I will get that posted by end of weekend. And I covered that, I covered this, so now I am so excited to show you this project. Um, I spent today trying to find it online, and I'm going to tell you that um, I found it in a journal. So I'll give you the name of the journal, I'll give you the website, it will be on um, when I post that article, I will also post a picture of this and then I will put a picture, uh, I, I will put the website and please tell um, Diana I sent you and because I told her I would be sending you guys and it is literally a two or three dollar download depending on if it's a two page. Now, they have a, a, less, a less decorative version and I'll explain it in a minute that is two dollars I believe. But th this particular design came within this journal. So, um, and this is the God's Girls, I think, God's, God's Girls journal. So, I'll, I'll see. It's not on it. But anyways. So, this, since we're talking about April, April showers bring May flowers. So, you know, I had touched on a little bit of rain theme within with some rhinestones with a card and a card collection thing we're going to do. And then this, of course, has the umbrella, and it has this. So it comes pretty much um, kind of like that, plain, and then you fill it in. So I do want to show you if you can... Oh, I don't know if you guys can see this. I'm sorry. So I'll pull this up tight. Um, let me turn that off. Maybe that would help. So it comes blank, and then you color it, and you fill it in. So what I did was I took those five verses. So now you've seen what the diagram is. Okay, I took it, I outlined it in markers. I used midliners. They're very easy to use. You can color in, you can paint in. I was talking to Diana, the owner, saying, hey, can, what's the paper like on these journals? Do I need to use gesso if I'm going to use watercolor? Y yes, no, you can test it, you know, that kind of a thing. I don't think, I think I would put gesso down, just to tell you, a clear gesso. But, so our first verse, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, Proverbs 17:22. I literally pulled out the sticker strip. What'd I do with that? Hold on, guys. Oh, it's probably in here. And I just laid it down and just started inserting it in my um, in my um, my diagram here. And and this is called Bible Quilt Journal. This is a BibleQuiltJournal.com, I think is her website. But I'll double check it before we get off. And then my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth, Psalms 121.2. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, Psalms 119.105. Yes, I'm going to read them again because we can't read enough scripture. Encourage one another, build each other up, 1 Thessalonians 5.11. And when I am afraid, I put my trust in you, Psalms 56.3. And then I put up here, thy word I've hid in my heart, Psalms 119.11. And with each one of them, I think I've written like King James, you know, that kind of a thing. I also put this right here, an additional scripture that says um, further on in that same chapter of Psalms 119.11 or um, is that 11? Oh, no, I hope I got that right. I'll have to double check that one. But it says I have um, treasured your word in my heart so that I may not sin against you. Yes, it's a different version. That's what it is. It's a New American Standard. I have treasured your word in my heart so that I may not sin against you. Isn't that a great? I love. I've treasured. I've treasured it in my heart. I love that. So then I just began writing, Jesus, I wrote in each one of the little sections kind of a prayer. So I wrote, Jesus, please help me to know your word. And they put love K. Jesus, help me build up others, edify others to you. Love K. Lord, thank you for my help. That is all you. Um, love K. And then I put, um, Lord, thank you for the beauty in each day. The good days, sunshine. The bad days, storms. They are all your days, Jesus. Love K. So we can use this. And then I, then my big 
um, overarching prayer was, Jesus, please light my way. Give me your merry heart. Help me to focus on you, serve you well, and love others. Love, Kay. So this is something that I did. So if you guys are interested, you can download individually or you can buy them by the book. I think this is the best deal ever, the books. Um, they're not, they're like, I think they're eight by 10. They're great. Okay. So this one doesn't have, I think this one is God's girls. And as you go through it, it kind of lines up with the month. So I kind of feel like it's pretty good, but um, she gives you examples. If you buy the book, she gives you um, suggestions. She walks you through it. And this is by Diana L Mills. And so they're nice cardstock with one of the plastic covers nicely bound the color of coils is the different kind of books which i love that i just found that out this last week talks about how to start a page um uh, attaching tabs you know all the different things she talks through um her website is right here um www.biblequiltjournal.com and that's diana so very nice woman um so um Page three is prayer. Well, you can see I was writing down scripture. Um, and then I am, and then a heart, um, and daughter of the king, um, rooted and grounded in love. And you can do these however you want. You can further divide them. You can use washi. You can use paper. You can use gesso. You can use dyes and stamps and everything else. So it's up to you. But... Um, and then you've got, you know, just different versions. So this, of course, would be great for uh, uh, Valentine's. And then you've got this for Resurrection Sunday, Easter. And then you're into April. And then um, this ties with that, the rainbow. And then you get into spring, April flowers, bring May flowers. Yeah, April showers, bring May flowers. There you go. And then you just keep going. And you can build this. And she has, like, verse... Um, uh, where you can cut them out, make little, um, little, uh, you punch a hole and put them on a ring, you know, that kind of a thing. Just really, really neat. So, um, I'm just going to kind of go like this and, and you may just want the PDF because then you can use it over and over. There's one I want to do on healing, um, that, um, I have this one. I don't think I have the healing one and she has a Bible study of scripture cards you can purchase and print out or, I don't know if she sells those pre-printed, but anyways, um, and I'm going to work through that because I'm having so much issue right now. So with my knees and my ankle. So, um, ever since this fall, it's just gone berserk. There's even a sports one. If you have a young son or even your husband music, if you got a music lover. So just a lot of these, I love that. Um, it just, it's just such a great creative way and this gives you the books of the Bible, um, Word, so right, God's Word, Word, okay. Then you have a blank set that you can fill in. You can put it, make tabs out of this. You can use it any way you want. Um, and then she gives you these um, little um, uh, tabs that you can cut out, or tags, sorry, that you can cut out and continue on. Every one of these comes with one of her cards a uh, little ruler, which I love those rulers. You guys know that, even though I already have them. And then um, a little um, kind of pre-done stamped and washi little card, uh, index card and a paper clip. So um, on the ruler are the books of the Bible. Now that I don't have. And what I really like is it has the bumpy side. So you can literally, you have to find the flat side, lay it down, and then you can tear paper to go in your journal. So... All right, friends, so I've given you a couple ideas. I highly, highly recommend the purchase of the book itself um, because unless you can just print it out super cheap, okay? Because the card stock it's printed on is beautiful. It's so nice. I've just gotten started in this, and I'm loving it. Um, that is one per month, and I can apply it to each one of our journals, faith journaling. And then there's also um, alphabets. There's um, and, the, and the great thing about this, so let me show you. Um, you can do it this right here, and then you can flip it over, and on the back side, take washi, markers, whatever you want to do, and you can create a whole new one from scratch on here. So you can go through it one year, and then you can come back to it the second year and get the second use out of this. I know, it's great. They, they talk about about the, um, the, there are specific month ones, 
And then they also talk about that in the alphabet is, you know, 26, and there's 52 weeks in the year, so you can literally do the front page A, and then go all the way through to Z, and then come back and hit the back side with, yes, I know, isn't it brilliant? I know. Okay, so now I said open to this page. So we, we did our home. We, we're um, skipping this next section because we're gonna cover something for the home. And then we're gonna come here. And I would genuinely say it is up to you how much memory keeping you want to do. Your weeks are in, your month is in. You can take your first scripture for this week is the uh, Proverbs 17:22. And you can write that in here and let this be your scripture writing. You can do one page or two. It is up to you. If you want to memorize it and you want to kick it up, because I've been saying do one page, go to, go to, and then take this for the first week and come back and add it to that week. And that you can remember on this week in April, 2024, that is the scripture that you worked on and committed to memory. And then you also were writing it so that you could hide God's word in your heart. Now, I didn't give you a sticker for the Psalms 119.11, but my sweet friends, I think you can write it. I still haven't finished my letter to the Lord. I gotta glue that. But I was thinking you could come back here and write it over the, um, the, uh, the flowers. You can write it along the edge. I mean, this isn't an extremely long verse. But, or you could write it all along the bottom if you wanted to fit perfectly along the bottom there if you're using the same uh, cover page as I did. So, all right, there is your scripture writing challenge. Show, show the Lord your love for him in that you want to hide his word in your heart. You're going to write it. You're going to read it. You're going to post it. You're going to pray it. You're going to research it through God's Word, through commentaries, through devotionals, through books. You're going to maybe even Bible quilt it. Here's some things that you can do to, to deepen that walk with Jesus. To And this is a fun way. And then when you write a scripture, write a prayer right next to it. I know. And some of these have more little um, squares than others. And it's really amazing. So anyways, and then if it doesn't have enough squares and you buy the one that you just want to buy the one download, then take a little ruler and just draw in different little boxes. It's not hard. It's very simple. And you can create your own boxes for all your scripture, your prayers, etc. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. I love things like this. I was doing Bible quilting when I didn't know it was Bible quilting. So I was country when country wasn't cool. <laughs> you know that old song? Yes, I was Bible quilting when Bible quilting wasn't cool. And I would just take blank notebooks and I would go in with washi and divide things up. I put a few pretty key stickers and then I would just write scripture and then write prayers and write scripture. And it looked like a, looked like a quilt. It looked like... Um, and I'd use the thin washi, the thick washi. I'd use um, cuts of paper. I'd decorate the squares. I would do all kinds of stuff. So, um, yeah, I love to do And I would do massive, like those 13-inch um, graph or dot grid journals. I'd get off of Amazon. I think it was a graph. was one of the biggest ones I did. And I, it was great. I mean, I, I remember sitting in um, Arizona, Phoenix, actually Scottsdale, when my husband went on a work trip with my children, I sat at the desk and did nothing but journal. And it was so much fun. All right, friends, let's pray. I'm gonna let you go. I'm sorry it's gone so long. I don't intend for these to go this long, but I knew that this was such an important part of our walk. I mean, I could spend a year on this topic alone. I really could with scripture and, you know, uh, going through the prayers of the Bible and, you know, and, and, um, and then, you know, hiding God's word in your heart and praying God's word and just all of that. Um, there's so much, you know, so much, so much that um, we can know and benefit in our walk by knowing God's word. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise your name. We thank you for your word. We thank you for Jesus. Jesus, thank you for all that you've done for us. We've just come through a season of, of being reminded of all you've done. 
Lord, help us to hunger after your word. Help us to want to hide it in our hearts. Help us to want to write it. Help us to want to write prayers with that scripture. Help us to want to share that scripture. Help us to um, apply that scripture in our lives. Lord, help us to learn it deep in our heart and help us to keep learning and keep learning and to seek out the, histor the history, the historical thought behind each scripture because we know the Hebraic or the Eastern way of thinking is very different than, than the, what they call the Greek or the Western thinking that we have here in America or in Canada or even in, in Europe. So Lord, help us to take that word back to the original intent that you had in its being recorded and then being taught to us now. And Lord, help us to, um, to love others. Help us to love others. Help us to share and give away and encourage and edify with your word and help it to not be offensive. Help us to, to share your word in such a way that people would not be turned off by it, that they would hunger for it. They would want to know more about you, Lord, that they'd want to read that themselves, if only to prove us wrong, which is wonderful, Lord. Um, I just love the stories where people are going to read the Bible to prove us wrong, and yet you touch their hearts for eternity. And I'm just praying that for each person here today, that they would know you deep in their hearts, and they would hide your word in their hearts, and that you would be that living word deep treasured in their hearts and lord right now we thank you so much on behalf of don and wayne and anybody else on this channel who's been going through difficult times so many people write and tell me things and donna asked she was she was very open for me sharing um this prayer with the channel and other groups that i'm involved with to get more people praying and lord we just ask you lord that you continue to be with wayne heal his body help all these treatments work help them to be that light for you everywhere they go in the hospital in the doctor's appointments in the 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 treatment appointments in all the different things that they're going to be busily doing now i also pray god right now for wayne that he will begin to feel better um, even if he has to have treatment um, for this cancer, we ask God that you just work a miracle and protect his body and help his heart be happy. A merry heart worketh like a medicine, and we pray that verse for Wayne right now. Lord, we thank you, God, for your word. We thank you that you give us scripture that we can pray over friends and let them know that um, through you, Lord, that they are loved. And more importantly, that they would see you, not us, that they'd see you, Lord. Lord, I'm just so grateful for all the opportunities and all the different people that I get to pray for in my church, in my friends, in my family, in my beautiful um, La Familia here. And Lord, I pray right now that you would just bless each and every person, that you would guide their steps, that they would seek you, that they want to know you better, and that they will come up with even better ideas for journaling, and they will share them with all of us. And Lord, show me a way to put us in a place where it's protected, it's not open, um, it's a, a maybe a, a more uh, private group where everybody can come together and share their scripture and share their journaling and share their Bible study and share their journey so that we can pray for each other and encourage each other on. Lord, we give this channel to you. We give you all the members, all the familia here and our little family. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. What an opportunity to come together where two or more are gathered in my name. There you are also, Lord, and I just stand on that scripture right now for each and every person who's a part of this channel. Lord, help them to hear you, not me. Help them to seek you. I'm nothing, God, and help them to serve you so that they can grow in their walk, so that when they come here, this is a place of refreshment, of encouragement, of um things that they can think on, pray on um, from your word, that they can grow in their walk with you, Lord. And Lord, please help me to get out of the way. Help me to serve you, Lord. Help my words be your words, and please forgive me when they're not. Please help those words never be heard. Let it only be you that they would hear. And Lord, I thank you so, so much. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Guys, I there was one thing in the comments, and it just came across my mind. Um... I used a saying here in Texas, we're just snake bit. So, um, my mom said that to me when I was a kid. I had been in like three accidents, which none of which were my fault. And my mother, I remember her telling me when I went to see her after one of the last accidents, she goes, honey, you're just snake bit. 
And that's what I was referring to the family member that had this <laughs> crazy stuff yesterday. Um, but that was three for that person. And it was just, doggone girl, you just snake bit. I just came right out of my mouth. It didn't mean she got bit by a snake. And I'm sorry. That's just a weird, crazy, I don't know if it's said everywhere, but we definitely say here in Texas because we got a lot of snakes. But, um, and not everywhere. We don't have snakes everywhere, but we live in the country, so we have snakes. And, um, and that's the one thing you avoid. You avoid rattlesnakes here. I mean, you know, wow, the treatment for that is crazy. Um, but it, it was just kind of one of those things that, oh my goodness, she just snake bit. So I, I apologize if I was confusing in any way and I didn't mean she was bit by snake, um, but just something had happened and, ah, uh, bless her, bless her heart. So anyways, all right, friends, I apologize. I need to be careful how I say things. Um, I'm very used to using, what is it? Euphemism. I'm so tired. Euphemisms. Euphemisms. Um, just little sayings that we know, you know, that you know when you grow up. Like, uh, I love this saying by Dolly Parton. He's busier than a one arm piper hanger, wallpaper hanger, basically. And it's like, oh my goodness, that's quite a visual picture. Okay, I get it. So he's pretty busy, you know. That's the kind of stuff that um, it just kind of funny, but yet, you know, kind of, I mean, it's just weird Southern humor. Who knows? But anyway, so I'm sorry if I was misleading in any way. They were not bit by a snake. And maybe I misread the comment too. I, I was just skimming over today and I, you know, I'm so tired today. But um, anyways, I apologize if I was misleading in any way. It's just a term for someone who just, just keeps getting you know, pounced on and pounced on and pounced on, you know, or attacked and attacked and attacked, bless her hearts, so, you know, kind of thing, or, you know, something keeps happening. So, all right, friends, I'm gonna let you go. Golly, this is the longest one I've done in a long time. I apologize. Um, dig in the word, send me any kind of pictures via josephinesdesign.com at gmail.com. It's listed below. I'd love to see what you're doing in your journal. And if you go do the Bible quilt, um, biblequiltjournal.com, Tell Diane I sent you. I told her I'd be sending y'all for that April one. And I hope, I hope you'll support this um, Christian woman. I mean, you're talking, some of the things are on sale for a dollar. Some are two dollars. Some are three, three fifty. Usually anything three or three fifty is at least two pages. And then the journals are very affordable for what you get. I'm going to tell you, for somebody who prints these things, um, ink, time, this paper is amazing. Plastic cover and binding. Yeah, it's worth it. It's worth it. I'm going to tell you it's worth it. So, all right, friends. I pray your day is blessed, creative, and lovely. I love you. But as much as I love you, Jesus loves you so much more. So much more. He is the word. He is wanting to be hidden in your heart. And, you know, I just pray that the Lord will just draw you to that as we go through this process. So I told you we hit, we hit our second quarter. So this next week we're going to talk about, we're on the second quarter now of the year. So we're going to talk about what are the goals for the second quarter? What are the goals, which I went over my goals and how we set them up on the weekly, um, from the month. But, um, we're also going to talk about, um, are you looking at your long range goals? And um, one of those goals was by second quarter April, we'd start memorizing scripture. So, um, and I understand there's people right now, definitely, you know, they're going through difficult periods and maybe it's not a good time. You know, tax season, this is a tough time for us, but in about, you know, a week and a half, hopefully it'll get a little bit better. So those are the things that, you know, I can't, I want to get my camper clean right now, but I'm going to have to wait. By the way, I did get half my closet done today. Yes, praise God. Now, I just got some new clothes that are coming. Um, anyways, it's a long story. I, the clothes that I'll try, and if they work, I'll keep. Um, for our trip this week, this summer, I mean. Um, and things are happening there, guys. Pray with me. And then, um, but I also have some things that I've been cleaning out. Things I pulled something out that was like literally two, three sizes too big. And I stood there and thought, how in the world did I miss this? How in the and then I pulled out some things that I thought... These are so ugly. I will never wear these. I need to give these away. Um, because when you're a certain size, you buy what you can get. Anybody? Can you relate? I know. And when they're on sale, you buy what you can get, you know, sometimes. And that's very much my mindset. And my husband got really upset with me here recently going, quit. I was wearing a Christian t-shirt yesterday and had a hole in the front and the middle. It was just the the fabric had worn away. And I was like, oh, I could get something. I could patch it. I could sew it. I could this. I could that it. 
And my husband was like, how many t-shirt, Christian t-shirts do you have? And I was like, oh, too many. And he said, I think you can let that go. And I was like, oh, or turn it into like a work shirt or something. Yeah, I could do that. I mean, it's not a bad hole. It's like a pinhole. But I mean, his point was, you really wear it till it falls apart. It's time not to. And by the way, I put on a pair of uh, capris today. They fit. They didn't fit last summer. So that was a blessing. So, um, and I haven't lost that much more weight since last summer. So it's kind of interesting how God works that out. So, um, but anyway, so there are things like this that are, that I'm getting done. So keep focused on your goals. Keep working towards them. We'll talk about that April quarter this week in a couple of our deals. I'll come back tomorrow with my March share, how I filled out the rest of my journal. And I haven't put my pictures in, but I got my pictures and I've already organized them, sectioned them off. I may do one set of pictures with y'all. We'll see. And then I've got some more pictures that my I sent to my sister when we changed phones. They deleted our um, our uh, Resurrection Sunday pictures um, in the transfer. So I'm hoping she still has them and send them to me. So anyways, um, so there you go, guys. All right, friends. That's this next week. That's our goal. This was for today. We're going to take what we learned today and apply it for life right? Okay. I'll get that article posted and, um, and some other things posted for you guys. Picture of that a particular page I did. All right, friends, I pray your day's blessed for creative, creative and lovely. I just said that to you. So it's time for me to go. I'm repeating myself. I love you guys. I'll talk to you soon. It's okay when I repeat scripture. It's not okay when I'm just like repeating stuff. Um, share with anyone, like, subscribe, leave a comment below and seriously, I, I, it, the number of people, it does not matter to me, but if you want to be notified every time a video comes up, you have to like or subscribe and you have to hit that little notification bell and put all. And then you also get like when I post a community um, word post, when I'm posting a picture or a word or something, you know, a message. So um, that's the only reason I say that. And um, hopefully you guys give me some ideas on where we can kind of set up a private community where we could talk back and forth. All right, friends, I'll talk to you soon. I love y'all. Y'all take care. Bye now.